So the delay from uh, from January of 2006 until the actual time of surgery, which was uh, March of 2006, uh, it, it stretched out. But it gave me lots of opportunity, I think, to do some investigation. I had pretty much made my mind up that you know I would have to leave my health in the hands of my healthcare provider. Um, he knew what he was doing. He's a genius in the world of urology here on the east coast of Canada. And um, But in the interim, I, I tried to find out as much information as I can, as I could, about prostate cancer. And, and I think at that point in time, I came up with the idea that there really needs to be a checklist for prostate cancer patients. There needs to be a questionnaire that you can put together of questions that you have prior to diagnosis, questions that you have to ask um, after diagnosis and prior to surgery and post surgery because really it's a very emotional roller coaster of a ride. Um, you still get the diagnosis that you have prostate cancer but you know something life goes on all of the things that you were doing uh, continue to happen. You still get up in the morning, you still have to look after a child, you're still married um, so life goes on and uh, you were trying to focus on that but you were also trying to focus on what was actually going to happen, how it would change your life. Um, so did a lot of research, talked to a lot of people. I found the best, um, the best place to find information about prostate cancer was to talk to other people that had gone through prostate cancer. And I've always said that, you know, to quote Stephen Ambrose, the late um, author, you know, prostate cancer survivors or prostate cancer patients uh, truly are a band of brothers and until you've gone through that uh, experience in your life it's it's very difficult to to understand all of the aspects and and the changes that have happened and will continue to happen so um, I tried to really investigate educate and make myself as aware as possible as um, as what was about to happen and how it may change my life so some prostate cancers are high risk aggressive and more likely to spread. Others are low risk, least likely to have bad outcomes. The biopsy says cancer, but current diagnostic tools provide limited information about how aggressive a man's individual disease is. So most men decide to treat prostate cancer immediately. Once treated, many men experience serious long-term side effects, like incontinence and sexual impotence. Immediate treatment isn't always needed, but right now, a man can't be sure if his cancer is the kind that is likely to require treatment or if he's okay to wait for now. What if there was a test that could determine how aggressive prostate cancer is? Genomic Health is developing a new test to do just that. By reviewing the underlying biology of the tumor and using genes from multiple biologic pathways, the test can predict the aggressiveness of prostate cancer when diagnosed allowing a man to make a more informed treatment decision with confidence, taking care of himself with more information and greater peace of mind.